Today we're going to unbox, take a quick look at, and maybe provide some sample video from this, the Canon Vixia Mini X. It's a little bit of an off-the-wall purchase, I know, but over the last few weeks I've been making almost daily vlogs over on my second channel using this, the Sony RX100. This is an amazing little camera that I've been using for a long time, but when you're holding it out in front of your face, you can't actually see what you're filming. So you can't make sure that you're in focus, you can't make sure what you're looking at's in focus. Again, amazing camera, but just not great for daily vlogging. I attempted to upgrade to the newer version of the RX100, the Mark III, because the Mark IV is just ridiculously expensive, but I had some issues with Amazon warehouse deals and I cannot justify paying full price. So the Vixia Mini X it is. And this is essentially just a Canon camcorder that you hold in your pocket. It has a fixed lens, it's a fisheye lens, or you can have it as a regular lens. It has your front facing microphones, it has no built in storage, has a flip up screen. Here's all the cool little things that you can do with it. It does 1080p video. It's only 30 frames per second, but it is 1080p. AVC HD, ultra wide angle fisheye lens. As you saw those large stereo microphones and you can control it over Wi-Fi. But let's jump right into the box. Immediately you'll see the warranty guide, you'll see the quick start guide, registration information, manuals and everything down inside the box. Here's that proprietary power brick. I have seen a little bit of stuff about the original Canon Vixia, and essentially if you wanted to charge it, you had to actually take the battery out and charge it separately. With this one, you just plug it in. Now that's definitely a step back in my opinion from what I was using before because the Sony RX100 you could charge over micro USB, but there are also external chargers for this camera, so I may end up picking up a second battery which comes with a spare charger, so I might be able to swap out that way. Speaking of the battery though, here it is. It is the Canon NB12L. 1910 milliamp hour battery. There's a mini USB cable included, a strap just in case you don't want to lose it, and finally the camera itself coated in a lovely layer of bubble wrap which my six-year-old will absolutely die for. But there it is. Definitely a little bigger than I kind of expect it to be but it's still not a terribly big camera. Put it up side by side next to the RX100. Definitely got a larger footprint but not by a huge amount and it's actually pretty similar in terms of depth so in terms of pocketability going to be pretty close. It might be a little bit harder to pocket, but it doesn't have this big lens sticking out of it. So this is what always caught on my pocket. So this will be just, it'll be kind of like having a, an extra battery pack in my pocket. But taking a quick look around, you have right here in the front that fisheye lens, your dual front facing stereo microphones. Here's the record button on the side, the USB and HDMI ports, not a full size HDMI. It's a mini HDMI or micro. I can't ever keep those straight. Uh, the playback button, if you wanted to play back the clips that you've already taken. Around the back, it says access. I'm guessing that's the, the light for when you're actually accessing your storage. And this should pop right out and that's where your battery will go. You see, you got your little battery door there as well as your full size SD card over on this side. And this is what makes it sort of interesting and unique to me. There's your DC in that proprietary charging port, but you also have headphone port and microphone port. The previous generation Vixia Mini did not have a microphone port, but this one does. And you've got your microphone level setting switch here. Physically rotating knob, definitely very nice there. As well as your on off switch. And then down here on the bottom you have your tripod mount and your little flip out kickstand, which you can put at whatever sort of angle that you want. Or I guess you could even technically hold it up by that if you wanted. So let's go ahead and stick a battery in here and we'll turn it on. We'll see what it looks like. And by the way, because I did forget to mention it earlier, this is that flip up screen. You flip it up like this if you're behind it. Can flip it up like this if you're in front of it so you can be looking at the camera and see what's going on inside of it but you can also put it at sort of whatever angle in between you want put it down here and have it up just a little bit put it this way you know you've got a lot of a lot of flexibility you know 180 degrees of flexibility there but let's go ahead and turn this on it'll probably go through an initial setup process have me set date and time and language and everything yep it says the battery is about halfway charged so i am going to have to give it a little bit of a charge there's your date format. That's what I prefer. I'm in the States. And for whatever reason, while I was setting the date and time, it went ahead and switched over to this mode. So I'm going to have to go back and see if I can fix that later. But you can see it went ahead and opened the lens for us. And if I flip it up like this, oh look, there we are. There's us. I'm, I look down with this camera, so it, it, we are looking straight up at the ceiling at this point. And then we can flip this around. We can look over at the table. We can look at the the very, very bright lights off in the distance there. We can change our audio levels, our mic level to manual if we want to do that. Not a bad touchscreen at all. Can't complain too much about that. The, we hit the home button there. It takes us into some of the settings. You can change audio scene. There's other settings, movie format. 
uh, AVC HD or MP4. You've got the video quality you can change right here. Right now it's at 17 megabits per second. I'm gonna switch it up to 24 megabits per second just because I, I do prefer having more bits to fight with. Auto slow shutter, on-screen markers. The refresh rate on this is not the best, but again, it's not really intended for uh, anything more than just seeing what's going on on the screen and wh what's going on on the camera at the time. And there's language, date and time is what I need to finish setting. There we go, much better. I've gone ahead and changed the date and time. Everything looks good. Ah, and then there's the whether you want to be zoomed in or not button. So this is the, the standard width. And then when I hit fisheye, wow, you get a lot more in there. And if you go back to home, you've got special recording modes if you want that. There's normal. There's interval recording, which would be, I guess, sort of a time lapse. There's slow motion. There's fast motion. Video snapshot. Pre record. And I seem to remember reading there was supposed to be a, a car mode as well. Shooting mode auto. Food. Sports. Night. Beach. Snow. Car. So, yeah. Uh, if you have it in the front of your car facing your passengers, there might be a lot of backlighting. This is supposed to compensate for that. And then P, programmed AE. So the, the programming mode is probably the best option, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to test through all of those, obviously. But we'll start out on auto. And of course, you can do remote control streaming. You can set it to have the camera as a monitor while you're away. And of course, monitor from home, connect the camcorder and smartphone directly. You can also record on the smartphone, that's interesting. Oh, I didn't even notice that. Leave the camcorder at home and control it via the internet while you're away. That's an interesting option. I may have to look into that. And then check and edit settings. Smartphone connection settings, monitor while out settings. Very, very cool stuff. This is a little more advanced than I actually thought it was. So I've got to charge this battery. I'm going to do some test clips with it and we'll move on to that. All right, so this is a quick test with the Canon Vixia Mini X. Audio looks like it sounds good. Uh, the video doesn't look terrible. Everything has the fisheye bubble to it, but can't really complain too much. This is a quick test in car mode and this is being shot in auto mode. It looks like I'm definitely a lot less exposed. So this is how the camera looks in pretty decent normal lighting. It's got a decent amount of indoor light at the moment. As you can see, it does have a very, very wide angle lens, which allows you to get up super close and get this weird fisheye look. Don't look up my nostrils. And when we take the lights down just a little bit, it's a little bit dimmer in here. You can see it changes a little bit, but it still doesn't look terribly bad. And just in case you're curious, if you hit the little plus button, the zoom in button, this is what it currently looks like. I'm having to hold this out at full arm's length to actually have my head in the picture. Here's a quick look at the outdoors. Just sort of panning around. Let's run it back on me. There we go, that's, that's walking around outdoors. This is my backyard. Lots and lots of light coming in. We'll step into the shade here so I can actually see what's going on. That's a little bit better. And here's a look at it zoomed in outdoors. Again, having to hold the arm out really far to do this. But then we turn it around and this is what it looks like when it's zoomed in. You don't have all of those fisheye wide angle weirdness to it anymore. And to wrap it up, this is decently low light. I've got one light on in this room. As you can see over there, that is the one light. And then I've got the light of the monitors hitting me. So it is pretty decently dark in here. Uh, it does get a little bit grainy. I've looked through some of this footage already, but it's definitely not bad at all. And the audio is really, really good. It would be better if I used a line in, obviously, so I might do that. And here's a bit of a quick test with an external microphone. I'm using the Rode video mic. Uh, I tried it with my Rode pin mic, my, my lavalier microphone, but it requires phantom power, which unfortunately it, it didn't want to support. I may be doing something wrong there. I may try plugging it in using the, uh, the Tascam at some point because that would really be the preferred option for me to be able to go three and a half millimeter into that from a lavalier mic instead of having to use this thing. Uh, however, I've got the audio set to manual, turned all the way up to 100 because when I tried it at auto, it didn't seem to want to record anything. So this is just a quick test. So I think that is about that. This seems to be a really good all around camera. I haven't had a chance to test the battery life yet, but I've been using this throughout the day. I've actually started using it for my daily vlog series, which of course you can find linked down in the video description. I'm gonna be using this, like I said, day in and day out moving forward. So hopefully it'll turn out okay. If it doesn't, I, I really don't know where I'll go from here, but like I said, the video looks good, the audio sounds good, and it can take an external microphone. So it seems like a pretty well-rounded option for me, but that's gonna be all for me for today. If you like this video, please do leave me a thumbs up down below the video. Make sure to subscribe to receive more videos when they become available and I'll see you again next time.